um, are starting a little question and answer time after the message, um, the third message of the series on the refiner's fire. And we've had a little bit of uh, discussion during break time and I'm just so grateful for Wanda that she was able to share um, how she feels that it's benefited her in being willing to per, per, uh, participate in a trial with the Lord rather than just, she was saying, like praying it away. She's a strong prayer and maybe praying it away, trying to just get rid of the trial instead of um, maybe stopping and analyzing uh, what the Lord may be trying to say or teach or that sort of thing. And um, so I think that's beautiful. And um, I think that, again, like I'd said before, that many times in, in spiritual and religious communities that um, at, uh, at times there has been this uh, repressing um, our emotions and feelings or areas that we struggle because we don't, haven't known how to deal with it. And so that it could just be, oh, just pray about it, or oh, you know, <clears throat> don't... Forgetting those things that are in the past. Yes, forget, yeah, just forget about whatever happened before mm -hmm. and just have faith, have faith, you know. And yes, those are all true, but at the same time, Jesus wants to work it through with us so that we can have faith. Because just pushing our feelings of distrust and fear down doesn't solve anything. It's still there, and it'll crop up later. Yes. Or he'll even say things like, don't claim it. You know, don't mm. say you're anxious, because then you're claiming it. Mm. You don't say you're depressed, because then you're claiming that. That's interesting. Mm. Yeah, so. I know in the black community that's said a lot. Mm. Yes. Okay, so Denitra was saying, you know, that a lot of times it said, you know, don't, don't claim it. Don't verbalize it because then you're claiming it. So just, you, you know, just push. It's another way of pushing it down to say, I, I don't claim this or whatever. And, and because so many of us have not had some of these deep um, emotions we've had all of our life because we haven't had the experience of it being changed permanently, um, it's a tendency to... Um, just repress it because we don't know what to do. So praise God we have the sanctuary as a model that get, guides and directs us at, to cooperate with God in this process. So that's what we should do, don't claim it? Or? No, that's um, someone saying, so is, is that what we should do is don't claim it? And um, no, that's the wrong way to handle it. <laughs> oh. That we can claim the promises of God that we should... Yeah. Um, that we should ask God to help us work it through. Bring it to Him. Talk to Him about it. Be frank, honest, and open in, in the judgment and in the cleansing experience. Absolutely. And I do thank you so much, Wanda, for opening up discussion here with those of you who are on. Um, we can also take some questions there. Um, also, but right now we have another question here. Actually, it's not a question. It's just a, a sanctuary. It's actually supporting the idea that, you know, when you're in the sin, is, is because you have to come into the courtyard, you see. And so, so you, we need to enter in there because we're covered by the righteousness those white curtains white represent curtains, the yeah. righteousness of Christ. Oh, yeah, she's saying yeah, that the, so. the white curtains yes. represent the righteousness of Christ. Even present, even if we're sinning or we're yeah, sinning. even if we're struggling yeah. with sin, yeah. come in through the gates of praise. He will envelop you with that robe of righteousness there, that, that uh, covering that the sanctuary has. He will cover you while you're working things through. It's, you know, it's not a once and done thing. And... Um, Yes. On the, on the, I just wanted to second witness that because I was going to say so much I think of dealing with grief also has to do with um, our natural defense mechanisms of, of self-righteousness. You know, no one wants to be wrong because being wrong makes us feel really bad. But again, mm -hmm. you know, we have the guilt and the shame and all of the things that come when we, uh, you know, feel like, like we're wrong. But if we enter into the righteousness We can take off our own robes of righteousness and put on the righteousness of Christ, which 
Self-righteousness. And I, yes. I like that too, because I, I think when Jesus said to them, where are you? Mm-hmm. They were outside the gates. They mm-hmm. weren't right. under his robe and covering anymore. Right. Mm-hmm. Just like you said. So they needed to be under him. And they weren't even ready to confess either. Right. Yeah. At all. Right. They were ready to mm-hmm. yeah, the devil yes. Did it. Yeah. yes. But, That's right. Yes. Thank you all so much. Can, Such can good... Um, uh, I, I'm not sure, but I'm just grateful for your comments and how um, it's just so true the, and how God can go back and reverse it all. And, and like, uh, like Wanda was saying, you know, to lay down our self-righteous garments and put on Christ's righteousness. Um, that, that was just beautifully said. I really appreciate that. Yes, any other thoughts or questions? Karen, a lot of people say, why do I need to go back? I want to go forward. Again, you talked mm-hmm. about this. Why do I need to go back? I have someone in my family that says, oh, you know, it's not, it's not healthy. I want to go forward. When it's the most healthy thing to do mm-hmm. is to go forward. And Ellen White says, let us all strive to be among the 144,000 mm-hmm. because they have no lie in them. Mm-hmm. So I see the beauty of it because we've already been forgiven. We're, we've justified. We're being sanctified then being glorified by going through this experience. And mm-hmm. so it takes away the pressure of, I think a lot of people have that misconception that if they look back, that they, that'll that make them, um, that they are not accepting the righteousness of God or that that um, we're denying that mm-hmm. or, or, or not, do you understand what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. That they're not, uh, we're not accepting the power of God mm-hmm. by looking backwards or, to, mm-hmm. you know, uh, at their past, at our childhood. Mm-hmm. When it's everything to who opening our books, mm-hmm. they don't mm-hmm. understand the beauty of opening the book with God mm-hmm. is not to condemn us, but to heal us completely, to bring us into total harmony, complete mm-hmm. Sabbath rest, as you talked about. Mm-hmm. The, Amen. The, the funny thing is they can't go forward because they're not. They're mm-hmm. still in the same thing being manifested now still. Mm-hmm. You know, so they so the past isn't gone because it's a pr- it's the present now. Exactly. But we're not dealing with the present because we think we can just go on. Mm-hmm. But we're going on with the same issues as from the past. Exactly. exactly. Yes, we definitely. That's what we're doing. <laughs> we definitely are. And exactly. and the reason why I feel people get stuck in that is mm-hmm. because it's so painful. Yeah. They don't know what to do with it. Yes. It's, you know, it's somebody that has not sw- gone swimming before is going to just jump in the deep end. <laughs> and they're overwhelmed with thoughts and feelings right. and, and condemnation and criticism and, <coughs> and, and not knowing that God <coughs> can take these things a little at a time to help us digest it a little at a time. And so usually it's because there's some really painful things that are 
the door and the, is shut tight and the key is locked it and the key's been thrown away and they just, they just can't uh, handle it because it's just too overwhelming. That's normally or typically um, often what happens because they, they just feel that it will take over their mind and their life and, and, and cause them to uh, come under that old situation rather than walking with Jesus in that old situation so that they can find freedom. Uh, freedom in it and once someone experiences it <clears throat> it you know then they're like oh okay but that's just like going swimming learning how to swim you know you just get your toes wet and get in a little ways and uh, and it can take that fear that fear away from it and it's it's okay. yes Yes, that's a that's a really good question. I've never really had anybody um, share you know share that. Did you want to say something right? Just, oh, yeah. Oh, I'm or sorry. Just one quick thought: you honor the physician, not necessarily what that physician has done. Yeah, that's words, there that's your one. Parents, just like we honor the president, even though we may not agree. So the okay. honor and respect. Yes, that that's very good. I yeah. was going to say when I as I've been working through my roots with my parents, I'm not really so much focused on my parents as much as I am on how I responded. Mm -hmm. So that's more of what I'm yeah. cleansing from mm -hmm. is how I responded and I how I felt about what my parents did. Mm -hmm. So my yeah. my that I mean God's bringing up the scene and the mm -hmm. situation and I'm reviewing it and I'm going mm -hmm. over it. But my focus isn't on the fact that my mom cursed me out. My mm -hmm. focus is on the fact that I hated my mom because she cursed me out. Mm -hmm. So I, mm -hmm. I'm not really yeah. focused so much on her mm -hmm. as it is on on me, on myself, on, on my right. reaction. Well, that's right. Yes, Judging very good, with, very good. With Carol, uh, her father was abusive, you know, and mm -hmm. she had to confess to him. Mm -hmm. It was her reaction, her response to his abuse. I think yes. the issue, what she's saying. Right, I think the issue is that yeah. people don't want to even bring up that their parents did something Were the, bad. Yes, mm -hmm. yes, they feel that's an honorable. I mean, yeah. right, because yes. then when they when they shut that down, that possibility yeah. down, it's because it comes up with a mixed bag. Mm -hmm. Because you do feel some anger towards mm -hmm. your parents, you do feel exactly. disrespect, uh, because that that's you know in. Mm -hmm. In my experience, you know, I had to be willing to do my very best to, <laughs> with the Lord, to, to remain as respectful and honoring as I possibly could, at the same time allowing myself to see that I really was angry with my mother. And that, you know, and that I needed to confess that, and that I needed to... Um, to face it because before it was like oh my mother is so nice she's so mm -hmm. perfect all the time why am I you know why am I still so stuck guilty. and the Lord you know is like yeah I know it's hard for you to um, admit that you feel you have felt anger and and I just um, it took me a long time to come to that place where I could admit it to myself I'm angry I'm upset about this um, and I need I need to for, be able to forgive. I need, and then I would get in this trap of, but, you know, what am I supposed to forgive her of if she did it all right and it's all my fault, you know? <laughs> and I would have to go round and round with that. But just to say, you know, I, I forgive her um, <clears throat> for not knowing um, what my needs were, you know? Um, 
that she was unaware because she didn't know. And that's where on the cross Jesus said, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. And to come to that place uh, with every particular with our parents, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. Um, and and uh, to let, be able to, to forgive them, to let it go, to really believe the truth that they didn't know. Whereas before, I was still, you know, subconsciously still clinging, but, but surely they knew, surely they knew. Without realizing it was, I had to come to that place where the Lord revealed to me that I was still thinking that they ought to know. That's why I couldn't forgive. They, but, you know, and anyway, so I don't know, that, doesn't, that was more right brain on my part than usual. Um, so I don't know if that answered some of it, but we do need to allow ourselves to honestly work things through with the Lord uh, without running with it into some kind of, I'm just going to be angry at my parents or be disrespectful to my parents, but to face it and confess it. Lord, I was angry with her. I rejected her and I looked down on her in certain ways because once you do, once you're angry with your parents, the devil makes you feel other things that aren't true. Um, and, and, and whatever. So, um, but I actually do have a whole little section that I want to share next week just on parents because all roots, it seemed like most roots anyway, go back to our parents even more than our siblings. And um, that fifth commandment, uh, I think it took me longer than anything um, to work through it just kept always going back to the fifth commandment, the fifth commandment, you know. Um, so hopefully I can flush that out more next week as we just focus on that, that final dross, you know, I just think of it as the, that fire, just shh, that final dross at the bottom, that final root just was, um, had to do with the parents and, and myself. And um, so hopefully I can even go further in explaining it uh, more clearly next time. So thank you. That's a that's a really important yeah, I question. I feel like I've gotten some help from here and other places. You know, one of the psychological things because it was last week I had a friend that she called me up and bawled me out for what I th the things I had done and so forth. You know. And she wasn't going to go anywhere with me anymore and all of this kind of stuff. So I just thought, well, I just won't go with her then. I'll just find other friends. I, I won't go anywhere with her. I won't call her up. I won't do anything with her. Well, the next day she called me up and apologized mm -hmm. for everything she said. And I didn't have to say anything. Isn't God good? <laughs> yes, indeed. That's, that's wonderful, Monona, that you were able to just... Hold your boundaries, hold your own, and not come under, like, you know, and just just let her have her choices and be at peace through that whole trial. Yeah. That's wonderful. Yeah. Praise God, Nona. And, and Meg, you had another I comment? I just remember being shocked when I found out, and it dawned on me that my parents weren't perfect. And <laughs> I felt so shocked at that, thinking that it was my fault for all of the issues. Okay. And did, then when I realized that they had made mistakes as well, it was harder to work through because then, because my parents represented God to me as yes. our parents do. So I had to, I had to work through what did God expect of them and what did they, they did the best that they could. Yes. I remember saying the Lord telling me, over and over, they did the best they could, and they lived up to the light that they knew. Yes. But um, it's neat when you talked about boundaries too. So we have such a hard time trying mm. to not come to place where we're self protecting, but we're really setting healthy boundaries. So yes. I'm, I'm hoping to explore that more. Yes. Um, yes. Oh, uh, thank you, Meg. And and um, I don't know how well you're hearing there. Um, Wanda, but that, that is very, very important is, uh, like she was saying, to realize that at one point in the cleansing she came to the place that she realized that her parents were not perfect and that it wasn't all her fault. Um, but then, then 
being able to forgive them for any of their imperfections. And the Lord did the same thing for me that, that he did for her and probably many of you, which is to continue over and over and saying they did the best they could. Mm -hmm. And I'd kind of throw back into it and kind of be in this waller for a while. And it was like the Lord would remind me that they did the best they could with what they knew and to be reprogrammed with that and to, to finally come to complete forgiveness um, <clears throat> was truly a beautiful thing. I know yeah. that as also as I um, got to know, as I um, got to know my mom's story, Mm. I really have more compassion too. Mm -hmm. That's like a... um, her telling me look at little bits and pieces, and then I also remember going and visiting my aunt, and my aunt telling me some of what happened. Mm. And so the more I I knew her story more and more, it was also mm -hmm. easier for me to have so much compassion for her. Yeah. And knowing that she really did do the best she could. Like, I didn't yeah. have to keep repeating that to myself mm -hmm. as I got to know what she went through. It's yeah. like, how could you yes. have any other tools yeah. in your toolbox yeah. when your mama p pulled a gun to your head? You yeah. know what I mean? She, you never were taught. When all you were, you were only beat whenever someone mm -hmm. made you, when you ever you made yeah. your mother angry, you upset mm -hmm. her. And, mm -hmm. and I know my grandmother because I spent time with her and, she didn't beat us, but she was very agitated, irritated. Mm -hmm. You couldn't really um, walk around. Like one, one year we went to her house for Christmas, and me, my brother, and my cousin were all going to go upstairs and watch a movie. And she was like, uh-uh, y'all, uh-uh, y'all don't go up, uh-uh. And my mom was like, we got to go. We go, we leaving. We got to, it's time to go. The whole thing got shut down oh. because... You know, my grandmother was so irritated because we want to go upstairs in the loft to watch a movie, you know. And that's yeah. how it, I always mm -hmm. remember seeing that all the yeah. time. Mm -hmm. And that's how my mom acted. Every yeah. little thing would irritate her. If you do mm -hmm. any little thing, it would just agitate her. Mm -hmm. If mm -hmm. one, time she, one time she went off on me and embarrassed me in front of my friends a few times and beat me in front of my friends because uh, I was either in her room or because she came home. And she didn't like something else. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah. So, like, I talk about it, but I talk about it in a sense because that's just the story. But I have so much compassion because that's really all she was taught. Yes. That's all she knew. Amen. You know, it's like, so it's like, I don't even have to keep repeating myself because I, mm -hmm. I know that. Right. What, you know, mm -hmm. you can only do what you were taught to do. Yes, right? exactly. Yeah. That's, that's, that's because yeah. I know with my, I, have a, had trouble talking with the Lord, talking things out. Like you had a, a grandmother that constantly talked to your mother um, about mm. every little thing. And she wasn't very psychological, your mother said, your grandmother, but she was just sent that kind, that mm -hmm. seek and return was mm -hmm. so powerful yeah. for Carol. And yeah. she asked a million questions and with her Levite mind. And then she passed that one to you. And I didn't have that at all. And I, I was upset mm -hmm. thinking, you guys all have this connection of talking and talking to God when I would freeze up and I realized that my mother wasn't taught uh, when her father died she ended up on the, in the funeral five days later in the car where my dad laid out and my granddad and pounding on his chest saying wake up um, we have company so nobody mm. told her her father had died Oh, and man. nobody explained to her when big events happened or this or that so she didn't explain to me so many times when they were in the hospital and what, uh, why I had to get farmed out to relatives and things like that nobody sat down and explained yeah. to me even as a little mind and figured that you know we'll keep her fed and watered and you know we'll make sure she's safe but they didn't psychologically mm. talk to me yeah. and so it's amazing how things like that are the need to be understood. Yeah. And like you said, our basic needs, our need to, to express who we are mm -hmm. and find out who we are mm -hmm. is mirrored through our parents. Mm -hmm. This seek and return mm -hmm. is so serve powerful. Return. Serve and return. Yes. Amen. That is so beautiful. And, um, and I, I have found, too, it's been harder for me to search my parents' backgrounds. But that is so key to be able to search their, their backgrounds, the third and fourth generation, right. to find where is the trouble spots that 
could have led to this in, you know, in my life um, because it's not as obvious. And, but the Lord had to do that. Now that you're saying that, you know, the Lord had to do that was to, to, to reveal some areas in their lives that had been passed down through the generations and how that affected them. And again, it, to remain respectful through that whole process of the Lord revealing what, what has really gone on, not just with my parents and me, but the generational things that have passed down, ways of handling things, ways of relating, and patterns in family relationships and what that means, um, including those avoidant styles or those anxious styles that our parents and grandparents may have had in handling stress or bonding or intimacy um, can help us to say that very thing. They really did their best with what they had and they um, and th that we forgive them for whatever they didn't know. And, and the thing is, is those of us who are parents too, you know, we take care of our children the best we know how, and we don't know their little needs of their, their different personalities. Like, you know, I had such a need for that quality time with my mom um, and, and reassurance, you know, throughout the day. And my daughter is just totally different. She wants something fun to do. She wants gifts. She wants, um, you know, other things. And so here I'm trying to give her quality time and she could care less. So I didn't get her needs met either. You know, so it, it, it's just interesting how they really don't know. I really didn't know, even though I was, had no ill feelings toward her. It's just hard to discern. And that's why we need to, as parents, um, ask the Lord to help us with our healing, but then also ask the Lord about this child, like it says in Desire of Ages that Mary did with Jesus. What? Tell me more about this child that I can participate. And so in that way, these things are unknown to our parents, certain needs that they had, even if, and that's the thing, a lot of people who are, even if they're in good families, that everything seemed normal, all of us are going to have to go through the judgment too. And so that's where we're going to have to be in tune with the Holy Spirit to give us some deeper yeah, insights. Right. Yes. As we're, as we're talking, I just want to share, like, yes. going back to the garden. And, you know, we have to deal with this reality. You know, you and I have passed through this before um, with my own personal issues. But basically, you know, Adam has been standing there like, Lord, how did you let this happen? This woman that you gave mm -hmm. me. Mm -hmm. We want to reverence God and we're taught, you know, to fear reverence God. But God is saying, come let us be together. Let's talk about it. Well, you know, it's hard to talk to somebody you're afraid of. So we yeah. have to break down that, you know, God wants us to reverence him and respect him. But he leaves the door open for us to have true and pure communication with him so that we can say, God, I was very angry at you um, because you allowed that to happen. I told me this situation. Yes, I have something that I wrote on that. Now, Monona had a thought, and then I want to read this thing I wrote down as we get to this, the bottom of this thing with parents and the family that we were chosen to be a part of. Go ahead, Monona, did you have a thought on? Um, well, my parents were farmers. They didn't study psychological things. They just did whatever came into their mind, and said yes. whatever came in, into their mind, and did whatever they thought they should do. Mm -hmm. And that's the way we were brought up. Mm -hmm. And so uh, they didn't, I think they didn't know any better. Correct. They did and not they, know. They fussed at each other a lot, mm -hmm. you know, all day long. Why'd you do this? Why'd you do that? Why don't you do so and so? Mm -hmm. You know, and this needs to be done. And uh, mm -hmm. 
against each other. One pit, they were pitting, pitting themselves against each other. Yes, mm -hmm. right. And they didn't realize what they were doing. They didn't read any material on it. Mm -mm. They didn't. They, my mother, she didn't hardly read anything. I never saw her sit sit down and read. Mm -hmm. She was busy with housework and and taking care of a garden and things like that. Sure, sure. And for six thousand years. That's been the primary focus is just almost physical survival. And we have been ignorant about all these things. And that's why there's this day of atonement, this day where now it's time to figure this stuff out. But then that's where we say we forgive our parents. They've done the best they know how. And we just repeat whatever we were taught in our own childhood, in our own homes. Then we repeat that in the next home. And, and without realizing it. And these things are all hidden to us, but that's why the Lord wants to, to bring it out. And I just had, and Wanda, I want you to know that I was even thinking of you as I was um, reading, I mean, writing this uh, the other day about our families, um, how the, the, the cleansing that the Lord has given me. It says, our families are chosen special for us to be the blueprint we were supposed to be. Our parents and our family also had a special blueprint and purpose. And even though they were not perfect or in worst case scenarios, um, they were very dysfunctional or almost completely destroyed, we were created to be a special opportunity to minister to that family and give another chance for the family to be what God first intended for them. We were created to be given an opportunity for the years the locust has eaten to be restored to its original blueprint. We can be a missionary, a messenger of hope, a humble example, the loving source for, a, for the family that is in need for their restoration. This is how we bring honor to our parents, becoming what God fully intended to do in the family in the first place, in our family in the first place. We must give grace and mercy in any area where they failed, knowing they gave all they had. They did their very best with what they had, and we can help give and provide whatever it is we think is missing or needed based on our blueprint. Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. They didn't know, plain and simple. It's not all about us all the time anyway. We need to think about that the purpose of our birth and blueprint was to be a blessing to our parents and family. The family dynamics need us because God created us for just that purpose, to meet the needs of the family for such a time as this. I watched the Lord do this with my grandchildren through um, the dysfunctional. There was a lot of dysfunction and each child made a huge impact on the family in its journey back from um, uh, dis dysfunction. It was not an accident. You were needed by God. That's why he created you the way he did. So you could bless the family in a special way with your particular gifts and blueprint. They are needed. You are needed. And I hope I wrote, I'll see if that, that, when you are adopted, the Lord is placing you in a situation where you are even more capable of bringing honor to your biological parents than ever before. Everything that has happened in your life is for a reason, and the Lord wants to use for your cleansing and ability to minister to the family better. This develops your blueprint even more. I need to edit some of this, but anyway, it was just my, my uh, journal notes. Uh, so beautiful. <laughs> I'm so moved by that. That is so powerful. They just, you know, that helps them to forgive themselves because they know that they Yes. Yes. 
Yes. Oh, yes. And I, I think about the, the gifts of your biological parents now um, from your mother and your father are, are passed down to you, um, any of us, and then um, we can bring them honor by fulfilling what was supposed to be done. And, and when our parents are completely crushed or broken, that they cannot do their blueprint, um, then we show an example of what that pr blueprint would have been by our own lives. Um, so, you know, because he had an original plan from generations to try to rescue your mother, your father, that brought them where they were when they conceived you, when they had you. And, um, and even though they didn't fulfill it, you can. You can carry the torch where they dropped off, where they left it down by the, the wayside. And that will bring honor. And in the end, when we go to heaven, it's going to be just so clear, all the family lines and each person being able to be chosen to be a part. And you, you bring glory then um, uh, when, when, we, when we become uh, something way beyond where our family was, then it brings glory back to our family, uh, what could have been, what God originally intended for them too. And if they're still alive, they can even respond to that and move forward themselves as a little child will lead them. If you're that child that can lead the family in a particular direction uh, because of being attached to God, um, that can reflect back to your parents. And then that blueprint now, because we've gone through that terrible struggle, terrible trial, we are stronger, we are more, um, we are more of whatever God wanted us to be, way more, because we had to go through that just as Jesus, because he came down here, went through all that horrible stuff. He is going to be exalted in a way throughout eternity. He never was before. And so we also are like little missionaries. We uh, can bear the cross for our family and the, and the gene pool that only your family has that particular gene pool. It's not going to happen in another family. But then if you're adopted, like my brother's adopted, he is pulled out of his family that could not provide anything for him. He almost starved to death at nine months old and the state took him and such like that. So God said, no, I'm going to pluck you out and put you in a family that can give you more. But now he's become so much and he can, he can ref, uh, God can reflect back now the gene pool that he came from. Um, what could be, what, what could have been and might, what might have been and, and be a blessing, a, a, a minister to his family um, that, of origin that he came from. So anyway, uh, th there's still more in my head, but it was a huge breakthrough that I had some time ago and I was just journaling it the other day um, so that this, this gratefulness for eternity um, of, of and, and again, he just kept saying, like, just showing me this gene pool that comes from your family or anybody, even in a huge dysfunctional family. The gene pool is the same. Just because Satan came in and was trashing the family doesn't mean that the gene pool, the original plan, the blueprint changed at all. It didn't change in God's mind. They just couldn't do their blueprint. And, but he didn't want to lose it. He didn't want to lose all those special gifts that your mom had and your special gifts your dad had and the special, amazing blending of those two gifts in a brand new person, you know, is, 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 that's never can be repeated. It, it wouldn't have been the same if, if you had been come from another family. It would be a different gene pool. Uh, and it wouldn't, it you wouldn't be the same at all. So anyway, I, it's just m mysterious and uh, so I go ahead. I thought about that too. And uh, we, here, Chris and I went to a seminar years ago about the Bill Gothard saying how important it is to re honor your mom and your dad and your DNA that that they are special because so mm -hmm. many people have so much brokenness because they mm -hmm. deny their mother. I wish I had another mother. I wish mm -hmm. I had another father. But as you were talking today. I got to thinking about the Jeffrey Dahmers and the Hitlers and the Jews. You have so much compassion on people even when we're in the judgment and we can look at their book and mm -hmm. see that they didn't fulfill their plan. 
but God put them together and had a plan for their salvation mm -hmm. and to be a light to the world. And they took a whole different route. Mm -hmm. And they will see it one day. We will see it too. Because mm -hmm. we will, you know, we will see where they we'll, deviated yeah, from we'll the path. But it gives me compassion for those that are our enemies or that, that have, um, that have turned away from God. And I can mm -hmm. see that because they, they do not know mm -hmm. the, that Father forgive them. They do not know what they've given up Amen. by, by resisting the Spirit of God and by not following Amen. who He is and asking Him and not going in the sanctuary because mm -hmm. everybody's a temple and everybody's being called and there's going to be a people in heaven that heard the voice of God that never knew the name of Jesus if they wouldn't following the Spirit. Mm -hmm. so, Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Well, I know it's getting late, and so we can kind of, you all have been very patient. I appreciate the, the, um, the interaction because it allows the Holy Spirit to really be poured out even more when we, when we talk and discuss, and I'm just so grateful. I don't know if there's one more quick question that wouldn't take but a minute. I, I hate to shut people out if they've been trying to uh, think of something. They have something on their brain they really, really want to share that we could um, do, but otherwise, um, you know, if somebody, if no one has anything else, we can just close out with a special word of prayer. Well, we can all pray and ask God what to do in certain situations. Amen. Even though Amen. we may not have anything to read on it or mm -hmm. whatever. Now, my parents, they read the Bible. Mm -hmm. But the, sometimes the Bible isn't interpreted right. Yes, that's so, right. That's There's right. deep things that other generations didn't know that we're learning today that are in the scriptures um, that include some of these psychological principles we need to know in the end, end of time. So um, let's go ahead and say a word of prayer um, and we'll dismiss. Dear Heavenly Father, we are just so grateful that you have put these hidden nuggets in the scripture that give us uh, like a window to help us to understand some of the deeper things, the deeper roots that are in our lives. And there's so much psychological information and studies that have been done that help us to know um, that um, these things are still there in our brains. These things do need to be worked through. And I just pray that you will give us a covering and a protection in a special way as we look at the sanctuary with the robe of Jesus Christ righteousness so that when we examine things we will not be overwhelmed because that does scare people sometimes and make it very difficult but that you will do it little at a time as we are able to handle it and that you will reveal different things and give us new ideas so that we can walk very um, carefully, very, walk very reverently with you through the books and through the areas in our lives that you see. Just reveal them to us as we are able and wash and cleanse and forgive us of all of our sins, especially as we think of honoring our parents and our family, the family that you chose. We can't blame the parents. Um, it goes back to you that you chose this for a purpose and we need to listen to what you want to say about the specialness of the family you chose, the specialness of the blueprint you wanted to make in us to reflect you and to restore the years and the generations that the locusts have eaten. And thank you, we can participate that. Will help us to be willing sacrifices to take up our cross and minister to the family that you chose for us. Thank you very much for each one. In Jesus' name we pray, amen.